Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're doing an experiment, as you see. Um, basically, I wanted to see how it would feel like, how the show would be different if I was standing. And this is kind of like a demonstration of, um, <clears throat> of how just something as simple as sitting or standing does affect <laughs> what we do, how we do it, um, just, <clears throat> just as an example. Um, so this, uh, the title of today's show is um, Happiness Off the Cuff um, Number Three, Standing. And like, so, all right, so now basically uh, what, I, what I like to do with these shows is, is um, basically just talk extemporaneously about this whole issue of, of free will and human will and, and all that stuff. And um, so, um, so yeah, I try not. Whoa, I try not to prepare too much for um, for this stuff. Whoa, I gotta keep. See now, all right, this is a perfect example. All right, like um, ordinarily, when I'm in a chair, you know, I'm pretty. Um, I'm not moving, you know, around and all, and so I can see like the camera changes. So like, you know, one thing like as we're doing this, um, my standing, that's gonna change things. I have to be much more aware of the camera positions, which one's on and stuff, where, where I am. And that, you know, that might take a bit of, <laughs> see, there you go, that might take a bit of um, off the topic or off the what I'm saying, but then again, it might add something positive. You know, it's hard to say. This isn't, you know, um, kind of like demonstrating that we don't have a free will is, um, is not about... Um, knowing what's better or worse, you know, what's right, wrong, and stuff. And even though that, that does take play a part, but it's just recognizing that everything we do is, um, is predetermined or it's unconscious. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. How are we going to do this? Um, I, I run a meetup in, um, in Manhattan. I think I probably better look at the camera a lot more. I'm looking everywhere but the camera. I... I run a meetup in, um, in Manhattan, like once a month, exploring illusion of free will. And there's a guy there who, you know, when you talk about cause and effect, how everything has a cause, and if everything has a cause, that makes free will impossible. Or <laughs> if you talk about how, um, how basically we have an unconscious, and um, this unconscious is the... Um, it's where all our memories are stored. It's where all, um, everything that we have. You have to realize our consciousness can only focus on one thing at a time. So anytime we're deciding, if we're deciding based on certain principles, moral principles, values, whatever, it's got to be in the unconscious. So anyway, so like, he, he kind of gets that. He kind of gets that because we have an unconscious, that is the storehouse of everything related to whatever we're going to decide and hence, if, if the data is in the unconscious, by definition, the conscious mind is not aware of the unconscious, so then the processing of that data or the decision-making must also be at the level of the unconscious. He gets this. He gets this, but he still prefers to, um, to hold the belief that, um, that he has a free will, naturally, because it's, a, it's kind of like a pleasant belief. It's... Um, let me try to, yeah, all right, what I'm trying to say is like, you know, for people to kind of like appreciate the value of understanding the, the nature of human will, its causal unconscious nature, um, there has to be a, um, a hedonic kind of consideration. In other words, basically to a, to a person, it has to be, it has to be worth it hedonically um, in terms of like satisfying the person. If a person um, kind of has so much invested in, um, in the notion, in the belief that we human beings are free to do whatever, you know, to think and say and feel and all that, whatever we want, if, if that's what... Um, If that's, you know, 
bringing more pleasure to the person than than the reality that everything's a movie that um, that nothing is up up to us. Well, then that's gonna um, that's gonna impact it. I mean, he you know again he rationally, reasonably, he you know, he gets it. He gets that free will is an illusion. He gets the free will is impossible. But this we are hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And and that's what he's doing. So so my job, the job of people trying to explain to the world that um our wills are causal and unconscious rather than free, my job is to um to explain to kind of like yeah, first to explain and hopefully also to persuade that um, that to the extent that we get um, that we overcome this illusion, to the extent that we understand that free will is just a notion. It just you know even the concept doesn't make sense. You know, will free of what? You know, uh, when to the extent that we recognize that we're just actors, you know, playing out our roles in this life and everything has been predetermined, then um, we will create, um, you know, if it happens, God willing, we will, um, we will create a much better world for ourselves um, on a personal and societal le level, on a global level. And the reason for this is, um, okay, I want to do a camera change here. The, re the reason for this, or maybe not, uh, the reason for this is that, um, okay, you gotta you gotta realize, you gotta understand. Where's a you gotta understand the um, whenever we hold on to the notion that we have a free will, okay, it um, sure it might make us feel good in a certain way, but the harm it creates, my God, um, it's like anytime anyone does anything that we consider wrong, we're gonna hold them responsible. We're gonna blame them. <laughs> we're gonna blame them, and um, and that is not good. That basically what that does is that takes humanity and it pits us against each other. You know, we're constantly like, you know, if we are like the authors, we're responsible, and that. I mean, think of every think of um, think of the people you love. Think of the people in your life, the people that um, that you really want to have good feelings for, but for the fact that you blame them. You know, so what's the value of, of understanding that um, that our wills are causal and not free, unconscious? It puts humanity on the same side. Okay, it just it puts humanity on the same side. It basically, instead of um, <laughs> I got to learn to look at the. It's funny because we we got to. Um, I'm experimenting with these shots, so we got a, like a, a monitor here. So I'm, like, I'm talking to the monitor, which is like what I do when I'm like, you know, using a webcam on, on the <laughs> computer. And because it's like, you know, I mean, it's me, but it's like talking to someone rather than like, you know, talking to the lens of the camera. But anyway, well, hopefully it'll work out. But um, yeah, what happens is, all right, to the extent that we understand and accept that we are just players, we're actors, we're, I mean, I don't, I'd prefer to not refer to us as puppets or robots or automatons because they have a negative connotation. People don't want to feel, you know, see themselves that way. So, you know, we're, we're instruments of God. We're instruments of fate. You know, we manifest God's will, okay? It's like my hand manifests my brain. My brain manifests God. So that's the way it is for everyone. So, so what happens? Yeah, so then like, then humanity's on, we're on the same side, you know, instead of like, you know, well, why did you do this? You're wrong, you're bad, you know, all this stuff. You know, we'd, we would like, we would commiserate. We would like, you know, get together and like, well, why, why would the universe compel, you know, that kind of behavior that, um, that you know, whether it's right or wrong, whatever, it's just, it's just the, the idea is that you have, the, the two people, the group of people, no longer blaming themselves and each other for whatever. And once you go from blame to, um, once you go from blame to, oh, <laughs> once you go from blame to, um, to understanding that our wills are causal, then, um, then, um, again, you can reap that benefit. Okay. 
So what else do I want to talk about? Um, these I like these shows. These shows are cool because like I can you know I can talk about whatever I want. And granted, it's all determined, predetermined. It's not up to me. But um, we we tend to enjoy the um, acting out God's will. We we tend to enjoy um, just basically acting. You know, we're, we're kind of like yeah, we're kind of like. Um, well, we're kind of like actors in a way, but not not really, because they get to interpret their roles and all that stuff. Um, all right, I you know I I got to get serious. Um, no, I've been serious. All right, <laughs> basically, basically our world is um, is facing a um, two monumental challenges, maybe more. Um, the first is climate change. Um, just a little background. When when Al Gore <clears throat> put out his movie in Communion Truth in I think 2006, um, the the kind of like the tipping point mark for quote unquote runaway global warming stuff, you know, global warming, climate change, you can't really stop, you can only slow down and adapt to, was um, <clears throat> 450 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere or greenhouse gases. Okay, this is scary. And so like, you know, and that was like in 2006. Then then they realized by 2009, 2010, that that figure was way too optimistic, that a more realistic figure for that tipping t point was 350 parts per million. Okay, so our problem is that um, we're at about 389 parts per million already so we're already beyond the point and we have to get below um, 350 by 2050 you know we've got you know about 40 years to do this but but still it's gonna you know but because like by 2050 our population of about 6.8 billion people now is going to rise to about 9.5 billion so so we're talking about a third more people roughly you know um having to do with you know having less energy now naturally if, if we um if we control fusion you know then that ball game's over no more climate problem in a certain sense i mean what we're feeling now is like related to what it was happening like 20 30 years ago it's like you know, there's kind of like a lapse, time lapse there, a gap. But um, anyway, so this climate problem is going to be with us for decades. You know, it's going to be a defining issue of our children's generation and their children's generation. Um, it's kind of like Mother Nature saying, well, hey, you know, humanity, you guys have got to get your act together. <laughs> the irony, of course, is that... Um, that it's not up to us, you know, it's not like we should blame ourselves because we don't have a free will, you know. But the, the very important thing is like, we're just beginning to feel the effects, you know, um, Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Katrina, the various other um, typhoons, tsunamis around the world, um, you know, the hottest years on record, year after year, you know, or a lot of them. Um, and, um, as as this stuff progresses, you know, the challenges might get a bit more daunting. Who knows? So the idea is like, if God willing, um, fate enables us, allows us, compels us to, to understand that we don't have a free will, then, then all of that blaming, because like, you know, you know, I mean, for example, like, you know, the, the, um, so many corporations, the oil industry, um, you know, big business that just does everything they can to maximize their present day profits, regardless of what happens to the environment. I mean, they're going to be, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people that will be very angry with them under, under the free will perspective. Okay, so, so what happens is, you know, we go to a causal world perspective and, all right, these people, everybody, we might be angry at, at the universe, at fate, at God for having us like, um, you know, just wreak havoc, havoc with, the, uh, with the environment. But 
but we wouldn't any longer be um, be angry with um, with the with people. We wouldn't any longer be angry with people, and that is what that's probably you know it's, it's about peace. It's about peace at all levels, at, at um, national, international, societal, personal, and um, so yeah. So that's you know that's why it's important. Um, in terms of climate change. Again, the defining issue of the next three, four decades at least. Um, then the other major challenge we're having is the global economic shrinking, I guess. The, the, the global economic pie is shrinking. That means that people who are, you know, subsisting on very little are going to be challenged. And that means, I mean, ultimately, because this is like happening not just in the... Um, the third world it's happening in the developed countries also that you know countries are going bankrupt or you know um the idea is like we're gonna have to we are going to have to do with less and and it's not something that we're gonna have to do out of the goodness of our hearts this is kind of like you know i mean um if you if you're Notice what's happening in in the Arab countries in in Libya. Uh, what happened in um, in Egypt, and you know what's happening in Syria and all that stuff. Basically, um, you know the the people who who have been in a sense disenfranchised by you know I suppose very rich in corporations and stuff who just command and own so much of the wealth. They're they're beginning to uh, claim their um, their right to live, to survive, to thrive. And interesting, the the, the issue of, <coughs> of free will is very important to this in, in certain in several ways. The first way is that um, okay um, now if we don't have a free will we don't blame ourselves for what we do you know it's not it's not up to us and we just don't um we don't blame ourselves you know it's it's not um it's not our fault but the other part of this is that we can't take credit in other words when we do something right regardless of what it is it's not our doing we're just lucky whatever so we have a socioeconomic system right now that just rewards that kind of luck that um that says well no 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 you it's, it wasn't just luck it was you know the result of your free will your hard work and sweat and all that stuff when again when again the reality was that whoever it was that did or didn't do whatever make money not whatever it's all predetermined we don't get to choose the kind of life or lifestyle we're going to have so so in terms of the um, economic pie, I mean, one, one kind of logical um, extension or correlate to, to everything being predetermined and free will being an illusion is that um, in a certain sense, it doesn't make sense to reward people differently. You know, to, for example, to pay one person a bigger salary than another. Um, because again, you know, like life can be unfair. Life can, for example, give some people advantages over others. And generally, what what we try to do with our laws, with our society, with our religion, with our social relations, is we try whenever we see something unfair in nature, we try to equalize it. You know, we yeah, we try to just make things more fair. You know, so the greatest good for the greatest number and um and so yeah with with the um with the causal will perspective that is the outcome that um we may for example let's say somebody's really sharp has a really good memory um we may want to um fund that person to go to medical school and to be a doctor and you know they that person may have to um you know have let's say access to um to um to things that are expensive 
that they have to use to do their thing. <laughs> but, but, um, but the idea would be that it would be needs-based. It wouldn't be based on, on the illusion of free will. It'd be like, for example, you know, doctors need whatever they need. Um, teachers need whatever they need. It would be like allotted based. I mean, this this sounds a little like communism, but it's it's not communism. Co communism. I, I I don't know what communism is about per se, but part of it that I think I remember reading was that they were into kind of like um, military um, domination. In other words, like if if it took military means to to spread communism that was part of I think the communist mind. I may be wrong about that I don't know I don't know if like you know the the communism of Stalin was different than Lenin whatever but basically it's maybe it's more like socialism just the idea that um, we're living in a world you know where because of climate change and global warming we are going to have to be much more understanding toward each other we're gonna have to share more we're gonna have to be more conscious of the fact that there are many unlucky among us. <clears throat> many of us, you know, many people are in our own families, you know, um, you know, a person becomes disabled, a person um, has, you know, is, is misfortunate. We have a safety net. We have, you know, we provide for them. And that is kind of like a recognition that, hey, they didn't ask to be ill. They didn't ask to be injured. They didn't ask to not be able to provide for themselves in, in some way or another. So, um, so yeah, so like in the world we live in now, that kind of fairness, that kind of kindness is kind of, um, <clears throat> it's kind of like, it, it's left to kindness, it's left to our conscience. If we're good, we're gonna do that. Um, but, but according, if, if we abandon, if we abandon the free will perspective and understand that everything is causal, that the entire universe is causal, reality is causal, our wills are causal. Everything's causal. If we understand that, then it's no longer a matter of kindness. It's a matter of logic. It, it no longer makes sense to um, to reward someone with you know billions of dollars while you know over a billion people are living on less than two dollars a day. There's probably more than that. Thirty thousand kids are dying every day from global poverty. So that kind of injustice under a causal perspective no longer makes sense, you know. All right, so that, so basically, all right, so, so I found out, like, this is cool. Like, before I um, did this, I really, you know, I, again, I like these off-the-cuff shows because I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And, and this is, and I guess with me, like, I do these shows. Before this show, I did a happiness show, 140 episodes about. You know, it's about helping people find what they really want out of life, everything else being a means, you know. And, um, and so, like, basically, the kind of research that I do is always, it's not just to satisfy, it's never to satisfy my curiosity, really. It's, it's pretty much always to enhance the welfare of people and enhance the, uh, the welfare of the planet. So... Um, so that explains why I guess when I when I give myself the opportunity and don't you know just focus on trying to explain exactly why we don't have a free will which I'll be doing for the next two episodes and I, I think I'm gonna sit down this this standing stuff I don't know I mean because like it's me it's probably me it's like you know okay when I'm like crossing a street right you know especially in the hot summer I'm walking slow slowly and um, and, you know, let's say there's a red light. I know I'm going to have to wait three, four minutes. If there's, like, a, a big, like, you know, lamppost or something, I will lean up against it. <laughs> so I have a natural aversion to, to standing when I can sit. So, but, but you know, anyway. So, um, so yeah, that's, you know, this, this whole issue of free will the versus causal unconscious will, it's not just academic, it's not just a curiosity, it's not just, you know, it's not an inconsequential, trivial consideration. It, it, um, it goes to the heart of who we are, you know? It's like, in a certain sense, it's like seeing us like, you know, there's a, there's a certain definition of God as being omnipresent, which means that God is everywhere. And so like, you know, obviously if God is everywhere, God is everything. 
So if God is everything, God is within us. So, so basically what I'm trying to say is like, instead of seeing ourselves as robots, as puppets, um, it is much wiser to person to keep our personification, you know, not our free personification. We're not free people. We don't have free wills, but we are extent we are we are manifestors of, of God's will. You know, that's what we do. And and that, you know, so like to the extent that we see ourselves not separate from God and guilty and evil and all this stuff, but a part of God, but just not the part of God that's responsible for decision making, just like my hand, you know, my, this hand is holding the mic. It's not the hand deciding to hold the mic, it's my, my mind that's, um, that's um, compelling it that way and naturally, you know, again, my, my mind is compelled by um, God, but, but that's what it is. It's basically in order, um, when we have the free will perspective, it, it also affects our, our self-identity, who we are. It's like God or, uh, and, and us. It's a division. Okay, whereas like, you know, the causal will perspective, I mean, this is also like pantheism or something, who knows. But um, it's the idea that we are God, but we're just not the um, decision-making part of God. And, you know, I think this is an important consideration because, like, you know, so many people who, who hold on to the belief in free will are from religious backgrounds, you know, and they don't want to kind of, like, sacrifice the, um, the feeling of, of being very religious. Because let me tell you, I know that feeling. I used to practice Orthodox Judaism for about two, three years. I, I wore the yarmulke, the sitzes, the... You know, all that stuff. I prayed, davened like a couple times a day to, you know, all that stuff. And like to, to kind of like feel connected to not just like a, an arbitrary universe, but, but you know, something that, that, that is conscious of us and loves us. And, you know, that's a, that's a great feeling. So like to the extent that we understand that our wills are causal and unconscious and not free, we can have more of that because... Um, because um, we are identifying more closely with God than seeing ourselves as separate. Okay, so, um, all right, this experiment is wrapping up. It's like, we got about 30 seconds, so, all right. Again, I'm, I'm gonna like um, explain more of the, um, the reasons why free will is impossible, and just as importantly, I'm gonna devote more time in future episodes to explaining why and how understanding this is not only rational and logical, but can vastly improve our lives. Okay, thanks for watching.